All right. How is everyone doing today? I'm doing a little bit. Feeling a little bit sick, but hopefully that shouldn't be too big of an issue. Fortunately, here I got some tea. That's good. All right, so I guess we'll start off with the conservative turmoil that is going on right now, and seeing who's the new, who's going to be the new leader, because I doubt it will be O'Toole. So I guess let's just jump right into it. Aaron O'Toole's hours as conservative leader could be numbered. His caucus is expected to decide his fate tomorrow. Sources tell us 35 MPs have signed a petition calling for a vote on O'Toole's leadership. That's a third of the caucus, clearing the 20% threshold needed to trigger a secret ballot. The vote is set for tomorrow at the National Caucus meeting, and if more than 50% of MPs, that's 60 yep, or more, cock. vote against him, O'Toole would have to step down. The caucus would then select an interim leader. The CBC's Hannah Thibodeau is on this story for us here in, in Ottawa. So, Hannah, what's the latest? Okay, so you gave us all those numbers there, David. Well, what's happening yesterday. today? You see both sides working those phones all day. We know that Aaron O'Toole and his team have been reaching out to caucus members, but not only caucus members, also other powerful conservatives outside of the inner circle here in Ottawa to try to get help. Probably to Kennedy shore too. up the votes they need to have to keep him on as conservative leader. Now, on the other hand, the anti-O'Toole people are also making calls to caucus members. Remember, this is I, I a don't vote think that he would will be support, in secret. And what they're saying is that some people are telling them yes or no, but they really feel they have that number in order to get Aaron O'Toole out of that leadership position. Now, as you mentioned, they need 50% plus one. That's 60 of the caucus members. Um, and so how will this all work out tomorrow? We know it's going to happen tomorrow at the caucus meeting. We are told that it's now going to be a virtual caucus meeting. Uh, so what they will do is if... A, a virtual caucus meeting, that actually kind of surprises me. Because, like, they're not even willing to give, uh, like, the government, especially, like, especially, like, the liberals, like, who's all vaccinated in their party, because they think it's, like, a, a giant violation of freedoms or some other bullshit like that. So I'm very surprised that it's online and not in person. It follows the same pattern as it did with the Sloan vote, the Derek Sloan vote. Remember, he was a mm -hmm. former conservative MP. He got into trouble. Derek Sloan is a psychopath, by the way. With the caucus, they voted him out. So how it worked with him is... If it follows the same thing, the leader would get five minutes off the top to give a speech, to say what he has to say. Then any caucus member who wants to who say wants to something hear what Derek Sloan can stand has to up do. and have two minutes. Uh, Derek Sloan? Is that who you're asking about? Is Derek Sloan? Um, he's too conservative for the conservatives, to put it nicely. He's a, He essentially spews, like, literal Nazi shit. I mean, like, Aaron O'Toole did that as well, but it's, he's one of the most psychotic uh, conservative uh, representatives. And that's, that's coming from the conservatives themselves, which is crazy to me minutes of time at the microphone then the leader gets an opportunity to respond to that and then finally they will do that vote and it will be a secret ballot now which way this is going to go you know if you listen to people on the hill you had some as they entered the hill today it's really all over the place so let me play a couple more for you I'm optimistic about the future of our party uh, I think we need uh, new strong principled leadership uh, that uh, that will allow basically what he's saying is he wants more racist leadership who is not afraid to use more authoritarian measures Our caucus, uh, to together, oh wait is this at the <laughs> is that is this at the 50,000 strong rally oh this is so funny 
does he deserve to it's not a, it's not a conservative leadership if you don't hear like some form of like truck or helicopter or whatever going on in the background why, why? So, why? that's how you know it's why conservative but so what do you what do you make of what's just happening? because you got a bunch of angry shirites out there that's the problem is this due to politician come on bro you, it's been two years should know how to wear a mask, my guy. I haven't spoken to enough of the guys to understand. It is really their calling card, yes. To understand, you know, who the 35 are, who are they not, who's supporting, who's not. So it'll be interesting to see what happens tomorrow. Yeah, so many sources behind the scenes, David, are telling us that it is you know, close to call, but also that Aaron O'Toole's time has been up for some time now. A lot of MPs, a lot of senators, well, we actually know of one senator who is out there, Senator Denise Batters, are frustrated with how Aaron O'Toole managed the election campaign. They felt he fumbled it. And then he, they're only saying that he fumbled it because it was, it's the second time that Justin Trudeau got elected over the conservatives because Aaron O'Toole just sucked in general. Like, there was no way he was going to win. And uh, Andrew Scheer was just a fucking lunatic. So, I mean, of course, like, they pulled the exact same shit that they did with, or they're pulling the exact same shit that they did with Scheer that they're doing with O'Toole now. It's, it's nothing new. And in last week's report, it was the post-election report. It didn't seem to blame him for any <clears throat> of the fault. What are they trying to promise? The conservatives? The conservatives promise a lot of shit, but they, you know, they're not afraid to be like, no, we're fucking taking away a bunch of shit like labor rights and a bunch of nonsense like that. Which is why they're worse than the fucking liberals. And the liberals are pretty fucking bad. What they feel is that he wasn't authentic. That he kind of flip-flopped on a lot of issues. Like, when it came to God. And, like, one thing I don't understand <coughs> is that why they ran O'Toole anyways. Because he tr he was more or less like trying to be like oh maybe i can get some more of the progressive vote but that blew up in his face a lot considering that the ndp was at like an all-time high last uh, last election for like popularity the ndp was like i think 21 percent whilst uh, the liberals like favorability whilst the liberals and conservatives were didn't even like crack 20 Guns. When it yeah, like, what was their reasoning to get people to vote for them? Conservatives try and say, be, and try and say, like, oh, if you vote for us, we're going to help the working class out. They never have. They have always spat in the working class's face. It came to the carbon tax and also right down to what type of conservative he actually is pitching himself as a true blue conservative in the leadership race and then going into the election campaign and moving it more towards the middle so they say they're on the irony with o'toole is he was such a, a fucking perfect conservative candidate like the only thing that he didn't do was be racist enough. So what they're most likely going to end up doing is picking some dipshit that's more right than this, that's more right wing this, than this idiot to try and uh, capture the PPC vote that they had allegedly lost. Happy with that. And it seems that, you know, tomorrow we are going to get some form of answer as to, as you say, will he stay or will he go? He's already right. gone, and, by the way. You know, he wasn't in public today. He wasn't in question period today. What are we hearing from Aaron O'Toole on this? Yeah, so we are keeping a close eye on that. As, you know, question <clears throat> period starts, the leader of the official opposition, opposition gets a first question. He was not there. As I mentioned, he and his team <coughs> were working the phones today. We did see him yesterday in the debate uh, on Ukraine. Uh, but late last night, he did. I mean, why is this? Why is the Ukraine shit even being brought up? Like, it has nothing to do with us. 
as far as I'm concerned, no one in fucking NATO should be doing anything with Ukraine. And to be fair, neither should Russia. Russia, sh like, Russia has been doing this shit for years at this point. Like, are we really surprised? The only reason why we're actually considering stepping into Ukraine now is because it's <clears throat> it would be a very strategic way or place for NATO to be as well as you know <clears throat> just a bunch of other bullshit like Russia Russia has no reason to be there either I mean it's just yeah it's just stupid you want to make a mountain out of a molehill I mean conservatives always do I mean Liberals do it as well, and they're still fucking annoying about it. But the conservatives just are way worse when it comes to it. They literally get fucking mad <clears throat> about, like, Mr. Potato Head rebranding. Instead of, like, being called the Mr. Potato Head brand, it's the fucking Potato Head brand. Like, who fucking cares about that? It's just a bunch of culture war bullshit did put out this statement. Let me read a part of that statement, David. Uh, in that, he says, I am not going anywhere, and I'm not turning back. Canada That's needs what you to be think. united and serious. I will ex If they want to be united and serious, they wouldn't vote for your party, you idiot. Except the result of this vote, the signers of this letter must accept it too. They brought it they will have to live with it. So what these numbers are look, look like, you, we talked to both sides, the anti-O'Toole side feel they have enough numbers, the, the uh, O'Toole side also feels that they do, but one of the questions that, you know, we're asking out there, what if it's like, you know, they get two thirds and mm -hmm. would he step down, like looking back at other situations? And what we're hearing is that from this letter too, you get your 50% plus one or I'm staying on. And if that were to happen, oh wow, this is going to continue on for quite some time. So a lot to look uh, look ahead to tomorrow when it decided. comes to the leadership of Aaron O'Toole. Okay, Hannah, thanks, and please come back if something happens. Will do. Before we're off the air. All right, that's the CBC's Hannah Thibodeau in Ottawa. Okay, we want to hear more about what's happening inside the Conservative camp. Obviously, this is the big story of the day. Well, first, we've reached Alberta Conservative MP Michelle Rempel Garner. She's in Ottawa and plans to vote against removing Aaron O'Toole from the leadership. Michelle Rempel. Wait, why would she do that? <clears throat> O'Toole already proved that he couldn't take down Trudeau, so it doesn't really make sense to vote against removing him. Because, like, the the election results were, like, the exact fucking same, so it doesn't matter. Well, Garner, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Let's start with the people who have started this whole process. Who are the 35 MPs who have signed this letter demanding this vote on Mr. O'Toole's leadership? I actually don't know. Your colleague Ron Liepert says these dissenters are a bunch of Shearites, as people who might be loyal to Andrew Shear. Do you do you think it's as simple as that? Oh God, could you imagine? Yeah, people are dumb. Could you imagine being fucking loyal to Andrew Shear? Like, what you have? You have to be like a giant loser in order to like still think Andrew Shear is fucking good. I don't want to call my colleagues names i yeah, work you do. with them and you know they're, they're family members i think what we need to do oh, right God. now is uh <laughs> focus on being a united opposition I, I mean even people that would never consider voting conservative need to have an opposition that's holding the government to account right now because there's a lot of problems in our country that need to be solved yeah and half of the problems are, are from you fucking idiots like Oh, this pisses me off so much. Like, they talk all about, like, these problems that the government has, but yet half of the time, it's due to them. And we can't do that if we're not coming together as a team. And, you know, I, I've worked with many people in my party uh, that, you know, I might not agree with everything on, on, and they might not agree with me, but we have managed to pull together to do some pretty spectacular things that I think benefit the country. And that's what I'd like to see see happen tomorrow, is, is more of that. You say you don't know who they are, but we've seen Mr. Benzin, for example, go public on Twitter. Garnet Genuis has made his uh, in, intentions known. So you, you've seen that. I mean, why do you think they are doing this now? That's for them to explain, not for me. 
Um, I know that I've been taking calls from my community all day today, and they're, you know, the overwhelming uh, sentiment that I'm hearing is, we, we need you guys to hold the government to account. We need to fix a broken healthcare system. We need to figure out what the yeah, but you guys aren't going to fix the broken healthcare system. You're going to make it even more broken. If you want to fix it, you would be voting with the NDP to actually provide more funding to it, as well as getting things like Pharmacare installed. But you guys won't do that because you don't care about the fucking everyday Canadian. Pandemic endgame is we need... And when it comes to the pandemic, you guys don't tend to care either. So, like, it's not surprising. She's not avoiding the question. Like, she's answering, she's answering it how a conservative would. To deal with product shortages. I, I, I just think people of all political <clears throat> stripe are really tired of politics, and they want to see... People only get tired of politics when, you know, things aren't fucking working out for, for them, and, like, it being brought up without, like, any merit... If there's merit to talking about politics, yeah, people are going to want to fucking listen. Members of parliament working for them. And I, my colleagues on all sides of this issue within my party are strong and have the capacity to do that. And I just think that a protracted leadership race that's triggered by caucus, there's already a process in place. Uh, for, for members to review the leader's performance after a federal election. Like, I, I just, I, I, I for, on behalf of my community, I need our team to pull together and, and to do that spectacular work. Uh, and, and frankly, it benefits, it benefits all Canadians. So that is my appeal to everyone in my party. And I, I, I think that's going to be my message tomorrow, too. You're, you're a Calgary MP. Uh, Bob Benson is a Calgary MP in Calgary Heritage. And he says in his letter that Mr. O'Toole needs to go because he won the leadership campaigning as a right winger. And then he's rolled out a policy that is, has a de facto carbon tax in it. And he flip flopped on guns. Are you, you know, your, your writings are. That's the one thing about Aaron O'Toole that really confuses me is like why he flip flops so much. Like even I didn't understand that. Like, I understand that he's, like, trying to get more of, like, the liberal and progressive vote, but it clearly didn't work, and, like, even dumbass liberals saw right through that. So, I don't, I don't understand why he just didn't try and, like, be more right-wing, because, like, that would have got the PPC voters to actually fucking vote conservative. Basically, right next door, are you hearing any of that from your constituents? Well, they're not next door, but um, <laughs> I, I will say this. Um, I know that there are many of my constituents who voted for us and gave us a mandate to hold the Liberals to account. That's what I'm working hard for them on. There's many issues in Alberta related to natural resources, workers' jobs. We need to be doing that in the House. I, 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 we have a process for members to deal with the internal politics of a leadership review that's already, you know, being planned. That's what I'd like to see happen. I, I'll, I'll say this. Um, I don't agree with everything. I don't, I've never agreed with everything any of my leaders that I've served under have done. I've always had differences with them. If you've always had problems with your leadership, then why did you get involved in the Conservative Party? And, and sometimes, you know, I mean, viewers who have gotten to know me over the year, I've had pretty vigorous differences with them. But that doesn't mean that I, I, I want to see us go into another leadership review, particularly right now, where there's a lot of things happening in this country that require calm, level heads and work within, within governance. And that includes my party. And again, I just, even as a grassroots activist, I came up through the party as a... As what kind of fucking grassroots activism have you been doing? You've just, you probably did like some fucking same old, same old, like dumbass nonsense that, you know, may have seen good at the time, but, you know, ended up making you more and more conservative. And like, what the fuck, like, grassroots activism is there in Alberta? It's fucking Alberta. Like, come on. If you actually want to be, like, involved in fucking 
grassroots activism there is plenty of of uh <clears throat> of groups and movements within just like your fucking communities anyways like get involved with like fucking food shelters or some other shit like that as a grassroots activist i'm one member of thousands across the country who have donated who work hard to elect conservative MPs, they should have a say in this, right? Um, I voted against the Reform what? Act uh, when it was debated in the House many years ago. I voted against the provisions when we had the choice after this election because I fundamentally believe that this should be driven by our party's membership and that our caucus's job is to focus on getting the job done. It doesn't mean that we have to ignore issues within caucus, but going to a leadership race every, every time, like we've gone through so many leadership races, I know my team has a capacity to work together and get this done, I like holding liberals to account. And I, I, I'd like to see that happen. I mean, clearly you guys haven't been holding liberals to account though. You've been agreeing with them on a, a vast majority of their policies outside of like legalizing marijuana and, you know, giving a fucking, giving us a new holiday to, you know, acknowledge the horrors that had happened in residential schools i mean you you your party probably probably won't even fucking bring up like the chinese head tax for example that's what i'd like to see us focus on so are, are you saying are you backing aaron aaron o'toole because you think this is the wrong time for a leadership race or are you backing aaron o'toole because you think he's the right leader for the conservative party to go into the next election well, I do think that we need a conservative party that reflects the Canada of 2022. And I've been very, you know, I, I was very... What is the Chinese head tax? The Chinese head tax was... We essentially took uh, <coughs> immigrants from primarily, like, young males in their, like, 20 to 30s, were able to do physical labor and, and like it primarily was like china uh like chinese laborers but it wasn't just them it was like all of east asia like you had korean laborers you had japanese laborers you had uh, filipino laborers and stuff like that the reason why it's called the chinese head tax and not like the Japanese head tax or whatever is because there was a lot of the Chinese laborers coming over to try and better themselves and and all that, but they weren't allowed to bring their families with them. So what the government ended up doing was putting a head tax on anyone who wasn't part of or, or who ever wasn't coming on over to help build the railways. So if you wanted to bring family over, you would have to pay additional money in order to get them into the country, which is psychotic. Very pleased to see Mr. O'Toole during the last federal election be unequivocal in his support for LGBTQ Canadians as well as, you know, the rights of women. <laughs> and no, he doesn't. those are two issues that are very important to me, and that's where he earned my respect. Are there things that, you know... <laughs> If, if Aaron was on the show right now, he would tell you that him and I have locked horns many times. But that 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 process of disagreeing and coming up with things, uh, new ideas, is not that's that's normal, right? What I and I, but to carry on with that, the other side of your question, I do think that a leadership race right now that's triggered by caucus that is not triggered by the members per our standing, you know, con the standing rules in our convention. I, I think it's a distraction at a time when all Canadians of all political stripes need a strong opposition. The strong opposition is not your party. The strong opposition is the NDP, unfortunately. Because they are the furthest left-leaning party that we have. The Liberals are center-right, and the NDP is center-left. At best, the Liberals are maybe center at best. So if you want a strong opposition party, you need to have a more left-wing party. It You don't need another right-wing party. The liberals are already that. They just care about more of the aesthetics.
to hold the government to account. You mentioned his support for LGBTQ issues, and I know you worked hard on the conversion therapy ban uh, to get it through Parliament and through the Senate. Mr. O'Toole's people, the sources close to him, are saying that a lot of this is because of the way that was pushed through and the way he supported it. Do you think some of this is revolt over the conversion therapy issue? What I saw in my, my caucus around that bill, without going into you know the confidence of a meeting, was a united caucus on how to approach this bill, um, even even across differences of opinion, right? And that was actually that was actually one of the highlights of my parliamentary career. I don't want to speculate on the motives of my colleagues, but I would choose to think that our caucus is the caucus that is capable of achieving great things, like the unity that we had on our approach to that bill in this parliament. I think that... What are the NDP offering the Liberals or Conservatives do not? Higher labor union rates, pharmacare, some form of universal basic income, which is... Uh, that's more like a band-aid solution. Uh, higher rates for indigenous indigenous communities and minority groups um what else were they doing as well i think like actually promoting like a, a green new deal style effort and jobs program that's just some of the few of the many things that they are that they were promoting at least last election, I kind of wish uh, Singh had took a stand on the uh, the pipeline. Like either, I wish he would have said either yes, we're going to be building it if we get elected because it's already in the works, or no, it we're not doing it because it doesn't align with our values as a party. That's what Canadians want to I see. I do in like us. saying that. And um, again, this is this is my appeal to my <laughs> colleagues on both sides of this issue, who many of whom I, you know, we've we've fought, we've laughed, we've you know, I think become family, and I, we need to unite. But can, the government to can, if Mr. O'Toole wins tomorrow, because he only needs fifty percent plus one, so he needs sixty or more MPs to stick with him. I, I mean, can you really function? Can he really stay on if 35 MPs have already signed a letter? That's 30 percent of the caucus, right? I mean, that's pretty big. I, I mean, can you really all sit together and kind of put Humpty Dumpty back together again tomorrow? Well, we have to um, somehow um, because we have a role as individual members of parliament to serve our community. And uh, I don't want to speculate on what the outcome of the meeting is until it happens. I think that's a that's a disservice to my colleagues. But I will say this: um, right now, you know, arguably, our our country is facing some of the most serious challenges we've seen in over a generation. And like every minute that we are spending talking about these issues, uh, and you know, sort of the the internal sausage making, we are not holding the liberals to account. And that has to stop. Will, will Aaron O'Toole survive tomorrow, do you think? Will he win this vote? No, he didn't. I hope so. I hope that um, my colleagues will understand that there is benefit to allowing our party membership to, to drive the bus on this per our Constitution. And that... You don't care about the Constitution. You don't even care about the laws that are in place right now. So it's just uh, you're just a straw, you're just talking to a straw man. But you know, and, and I also hope that all sides you know figure out how to come together because we we have a job to do, um, and that's that's my appeal today. Okay, Michelle Rempel Garner, thank you for your time. Take care. Okay, so we requested MPs who have said they signed the letter or are calling for a caucus review. They either did not reply or are not available. But we do have a new open letter from Conservative MP Bob Benson from Calgary Heritage who writes, this is a letter to his caucus colleagues, that Mr. O'Toole's public and private actions have threatened an unrepairable split in the party and accuses Mr. O'Toole of launching a... What split is he referring to? 
that he tried to gain more of the the liber the progressive vote being liberals like that doesn't make sense like the only reason why you're saying that is because the ppc had got more voters last election than the election before that like they're just it's so stupid you guys got literally the exact same amount of votes like are, are you trying to say that you know you need to be more racist attacks have threatening consequences against any mp who dares <laughs> dissent saying that even if o'toole wins the vote on wednesday the conservative party and its grassroots supporters across the country will lose and he suspects that if mr o'toole squeaks out of victory he will attempt to re re remove me from caucus saying so be it well, Jamie Ellerton has worked on conservative campaigns and caucuses for 18 years. He's now with Canaptis Strategic Communications in Toronto. Jamie, thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. You think Aaron O'Toole needs to go. Why? I think if you... Because he lost. That's the only reason why they're... They're ousted... Why they ousted him. It's because he lost. And they saw how how COVID had affected or in ha and radicalized more people and ended up, they ended up voting for the PPC. That's the only reason why he thinks that they need to go. If you just look at where the party has been since the election and what you've seen under uh, his leadership, I just do not see any kind of course correction or contrition as to how they're going to do something going forward. And Aaron O'Toole now with a kind of five months after uh, the election in September, kind of continues to be just consumed by the media cycle on a week-to-week on -week basis. I think if you are going to say, give me a chance to do something again, uh, put some things in the window, talk about what you're going to change and how it's going to be different. Instead, I think he just gets getting keep drawn into polemic debates uh, and has been unable to kind of reframe any of those conversations in a way that kind of unites people behind his cause. Uh, and I think if you look at the actual situation within caucus now, it's just so untenable. I think that's uh, kind of the tip of the iceberg. When I've talked to conservatives across the country, even those who supported Aaron from the get-go on his leadership campaign to now, a lot of people are left scratching their head wondering what he's doing. And I just think it's to the point now where the party needs clarity going forward. And I think the uh, caucus uh, reform act uh, caucus maneuver tomorrow will bring the party the clarity it needs. You heard the irony is that if... O'Toole ran under what he did that wasn't during COVID, he probably would have won. Let's be real. If he ran on a more right-wing populist agenda, like the PPC did, he would have gotten more of those votes. I don't think that O'Toole made the wrong play during the election i think if it wasn't during due to covid and you know it being a snap election he uh he probably would have won uh, i mean as unfortunate as that is to say it's it's the truth Heard what Michelle Rempel Garner had to say, though, that it's time to focus on issues, not on infighting, and let the grassroots uh, settle this at, at the next convention. Does she have a point there? <laughs> I, I think I, I'm from Ontario, David, where Patrick Brown resigned in disgrace as Ontario PC leader at the end of January. Uh, Doug Ford won the leadership race at the end of March and was premier uh, by June. And so I, I think in terms of it's not the time for a race, I think if you look at where the party is and the obvious divisions that exist, uh, there needs to be, I think, a more open conversation. There needs to be a... The only divisions that that exist are people who want the... Cons who think that the conservatives don't go, go far enough in terms of being more right-wing. Because there are people that ended up voting... The people that ended up voting for the NDP want the conservatives to be more like the the Republicans. So, I mean, there is really no internal division because those people ended up voting for <coughs> the PPC or just, like, tried to, like, sway the PPC votes in the conservatives' conservatives' favor. Reconciliation. 
uh, from between the various factions as to what that is. And I think that's an opportunity for a leader to actually come forward and reframe that debate to unite conservatives going forward, to continue to kind of hug the process and technicalities of uh, things like the party constitution for a convention that's going to be over a year away, uh, and, 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 and to kind of live in this weird state of purgatory. Uh, I think actually weakens the party's chances of the next election, and I think that's why I personally welcome what the caucus is as initiated in terms of getting clarity on this going forward. And if Aaron O'Toole does win with a 50% plus one and decides to stay on as leader, I think it's incumbent upon him to truly start to more effectively lay out a vision uh, as to what he wants to do, as opposed to just kind of screaming at Justin Trudeau one day and flip-flopping. I, I mean, that's what conservatives do, though, is that they just scream at liberals. It's nothing new. Like, you're acting as if this is, like, new information to you. Like, every conservative do does it, and liberals do it too. I, I think the people that end up getting the most, screamed out at the most is the NDP, because they actually sort of care about uh, the Canadian working class. Being on position, other positions the next. But can he realistically uh, stay in this role with already 35 publicly saying he needs to go? That's 30% of the caucus. And, uh, you know, you assume there are some more who haven't publicly declared or haven't signed the letter who might agree with them. That already puts him in a very weakened position. We saw Joe Clark go a long time ago, but, uh, you know, needing two-thirds. It, it's going to be tough for Mr. O'Toole to get there because he's already got a ceiling of 70%. Yeah, I think that, frankly, the position is untenable, which is why I think even if you hear some of the way people are starting trying to frame <laughs> this as a SOCON versus the rest of the party kind of debate, I frankly just don't think that actually applies. Uh, I think a lot of people on your show who have seen me comment over the years would uh, pretty much quickly agree that I am no staunch SOCON. But I think when you look at the state of the party and what Aaron O'Toole has or even... They're just children yelling at each other. I mean, pretty much, yeah. Like, are they just, like, yelling at each other and saying that they want to hold... A, uh, they want to hold the other guys accountable without actually doing anything. Unless it's a minority government, then they actually have to, if they want to actually get stuff done, they actually have to work with other parties. Like, the Liberals, for example, didn't want to give out <clears throat> too much money when it came to CERB. They wanted to give out, I think it was a thousand dollars maximum per month. And a bunch of and then a bunch of other stuff, but the NDP was like, no, you're going to be passing this, this bill with these and having the having CERB be $2,000 a month instead of $1,000 a month or whatever the fuck it was. And that more accurately hasn't done since the election, I think there's so much at stake for the country as to what we're trying to do going forward. And I think he's kind of created the situation himself. Even I've heard right, reports today that he's kind of having people calling around and kind of having still taking like the stick approach is like, there'll be consequences if you don't support me, I'm going to win this and trying to call people's bluff. And I just think I, the, to me, those aren't the actions of a leader who has a vision and is clearly in control. What about the binary choice that Mr. O'Toole has sort of put on the table here, saying that the party has a choice between two roads, one that he calls angry, negative, and extreme, and the other that he calls a more modern direction, which is the sort of party that you have advocated for in the past. Is the party really facing that kind of choice right now? I think that's very much going to be part of the party conversation going forward, David, but I would also say who's going to step forward to enter this leadership race and what that looks like is very much up for debate. When we were having the public conversations with the party in January of 2020, we thought that that leadership race is going to be a race between Pierre Polyab, Rana Ambrose, maybe uh, Jean Charest, maybe Peter McKay, and uh, who ultimately ended up running wasn't part of that conversation. And the race played itself out. I actually have uh, confidence in the democratic process and in the ability to persuade people to one's position and win and grow support to be able to do that. And so I don't think we can prejudge a leadership race uh, before it's, it's actually began. But I think if you look at the general culture uh, that exists within our political climate, it is undeniable that things are incredibly polarized. Everyone talks past each other. Everyone's an all-star in their own social media feed and kind of ignores everyone else. I think a leadership candidate that steps forward 
that can be stay true to conservative principles while uniting and growing our voters here and applying those to the challenges Canada faces today will be well positioned to win that, whether they're in caucus or with uh, currently outside of it. So we know he's down 35 votes going into this tomorrow based on the number that have signed the letter. I mean, <laughs> do you think Aaron O'Toole survives this tomorrow? Can he survive it? Uh, on a technicality, sure he can in the same way like a team 10 games back with 12 games to play can um, clinch that last playoff spot. But I think we all know that it's very unlikely to happen. Do you think the party could split over this? No. I do think there's a, 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 some risk of that. I think if you look at how some of the actors, especially who are more vocal in driving particular issues and causes talk about it, it does sometimes seem like some of these issues are irreconcilable. But that's where I think there's actually a test of leadership to look at how you can bring uh, conservatives together and bring new other Canadians who aren't currently in the party into the party and represent the faces of modern Canada as it exists today. Okay, Jamie Ellerton, thank you. If you want to, like, if you want to represent the faces of modern Canada, you wouldn't be voting for these dipshits. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Thanks, David. I guess that's it. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing. All right. Let's get on to who re ended up replacing O'Toole over, or who ended up replacing O'Toole. My prediction is it's going to be someone who is more right wing than O'Toole, and to try and capture the uh, more of the PPC vote. That's what I predict is who's going to be. Aaron O'Toole is out as the leader of the Conservative Party of Canada. O'Toole was voted out of his job by members of his own caucus on Wednesday in Ottawa. Conservative MPs met Wednesday morning to debate and discuss <coughs> O'Toole's contentious leadership. A majority of those MPs voted against keeping O'Toole, and we are told, but we are still waiting for confirmation of the specific numbers from the party, that it was a significant... Hell yeah, brother, beep, beep. <laughs> majority of his own members of parliament in his caucus who voted against him. This was all triggered as a result of a letter that 35 discontented members of parliament signed demanding a leadership review of Aaron O'Toole's leadership. This is something that is unique to the Conservative Party, where caucus can decide to remove the leader alone. There has been extensive tensions and divisions inside the party from those who felt that the trucker convoy here in Ottawa should have been supported and don't support I mean, I'm kind of surprised that, like, they didn't support the convoy. Like, it just would have made a lot more sense for them to be, like, if they did. Like, look, they're, look at these proud and uh, proud Canadians who are standing up to government tyranny. But it, it would have been, like, suicide for them to do so support vaccine mandates, climate change policies like O'Toole had, or gun control and say they don't trust the former leader and that they did not like his flip-flops as they described it on the election trail. Yeah, but you want to know, <coughs> you know, who actually likes flip-flops and actually gets stuff done? The fucking Taliban, remember that? You had, you had these <laughs> motherfuckers running up and into the government places and like flip flops and just taking over everything. Well, so they, they can't even secure an election. What a bunch of losers. O'Toole's people have insisted that to make the party electable, they had to move towards the center, adopting policies that some of the base <clears throat> and some MPs might not like. But they contended that it was the only way to get the party elected in major urban centers. Ultimately, O'Toole's own caucus has rejected him. We've also heard criticisms of his management of caucus and whether or not he was listening to them about their concerns. And, of course, caucus management is a huge deal if you're a leader. It is a question now who will be the next leader of the Conservative Party. MPs are scheduled to meet later in Ottawa tonight to discuss that and figure out who will lead them until they can start yet another leadership convention. Mercedes Stevenson. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot that they... That they did that, that they had to. Was it already decided who was the new leadership? It's, I don't really care about that. I guess we can cover that next time.
All right, let's move on to more marketplace fun. We watched last time we ended up finishing the Amazon returns thing, which I was completely right on every little bit of it. So I guess let's go on to the CBD products. Whoa, baby, that is a lot of weed. What's really in your CBD? CBD is good for everything. It's like an overall wellness. Undercover. It's kind of like a superpower almost. Superpower or super scam? To say it's 100% effective is misleading. <coughs> Are you really sold what you're told? We found absolutely no CBD in that oil. Investigating the world of CBD on your marketplace. I'm actually kind of surprised that they would do one of these on pot like but but i mean i guess to be fair who is this by cbc i mean i guess cbc is fairly liberal so it kind of makes sense that they would here's something we don't normally do on marketplace talk about drugs here we go. we're breaking the law Where's bro pot is legal i don't know yeah, it's been legal for a while. I don't know why you're saying you're breaking the law. Where's that from? This one's from BC. All these products we just bought, these oils and creams. Oh, it smells like eucalyptus. These pills and pet products. CBD hemp pet oil drops. These chocolate bars and gummies. It smells good. They're all illegal. Probably is good too. But we didn't realize how illegal they are till we ordered them shake well before use three times a day we want a lab to test what's actually in these things put it on your pillow and it gives you a nice night's sleep the key ingredient is supposed to be cbd or cannabidiol a compound found in cannabis that doesn't get you high but these websites <laughs> we bought from say it could help with everything from sleep to pain to anxiety it's a disposable vape Problem is, those sites, their health claims, and these products are all part of a thriving black market that's putting Canadians at risk. Wow. I, I mean, <coughs> I guess there still technically is like a stigma around like, around pot. Because like alcohol puts way much more Canadians at risk than, than pot does. And like, when it my prediction for what's gonna end up happening is that they're not gonna be finding any like CBD or anything like that, and it's gonna be like more of a, like a placebo thing. And then <coughs> there's probably gonna be like some other shit in there, but like. Like gummies and shit, man. Come on, that's that stuff's legal as hell. Do you use CBD? <laughs> oh hell yeah! Oh hell yeah! Wow. Poggers. You do. What do you use it for? Uh, anxiety. Yeah. And does it work? Absolutely. Can confirm. It one hundred percent does. It helps out so much with anxiety. So, excuse me, miss. Do you use CBD? Occasionally. Oh. Sometimes anxiety, sometimes to help me sleep better, sometimes to get out of my head and more into the rest of me. Sometimes I use it as a hand cream, um, sometimes if I need to get to sleep. <laughs> so a hand cream helps you get to sleep? A little bit, yeah. Do you use CBD? Oh, that's so funny, we were just talking about it. Really? <laughs> Everybody's talking about CBD because it is in fact legal in Canada if you buy it from the right places. My husband uses it for... Like, the one thing I don't understand is why they just didn't decriminalize it instead of, like, legalizing it. It just doesn't make sense to me. Because, like, 
it ultimately doesn't matter that whether you legalize it or or decriminalize it or whatever because people are still going to use it and like decriminalizing it makes it so that like people who are actually like ethically doing it can actually like not get shut down for doing so because you know lobster assholes and it's just better for if you want to support if you want to support businesses it's just better for them like like there still is regulations and decriminalization or various health issues, so like body pain. Do you know that a lot of the CBD products that are out there are actually illegal? No, I don't. I know where he gets it from, it's the government. So I don't think that that's illegal. She's right about that. You have to buy. So yeah, whatever something is legalized, like say in this instance pot, it's only legal if you get it from like government uh, stores or or stores that have partnered with the government to, or have their green card in order to legally sell it, but like, I don't really care about that. A CBD from the government or a licensed retailer, not the black market where so many of us shop. Now, do you know that a lot of the CBD products that are out there are actually illegal? There you go, I didn't know that. I was not aware of that, no. Mm -hmm. And how do you get yours, if, I, if you don't mind me asking? I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> do I look like a fool? <laughs> <laughs> She's so smart. <laughs> she 100% has a dealer that she goes to, which is completely okay with me. Has been rele relegated for some reason. Yeah, it's so stupid. But, like, this lady is really smart, though. Like, she doesn't want to get her dealer in trouble. <laughs> because apparently, for whatever reason, like, you're allowed to purchase it, but you can't sell it. It's so stupid, which is why decriminalization is so much better. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we pro we all do. We all do. And, like, if anyone's ever seen the show Weeds... It is such a good show about pot, and <clears throat> well, if you haven't watched it, you should definitely watch it. And like, they actually go into like some of the stuff that actually the actual like dealers have to put up with, you know, like being afraid of, you know, being busted and like throwing away and like someone spilling the beans or not paying out or whatever. Does it go into the effects of weed? Absolutely. It is a phenomenal show. And, like, it, it also portrays, like, uh, stoners as, like, not just stupid idiots as well. Like, there's such a wide variety of people who do, do pot. Like, whether that be for, like, anxiety reasons, pain reasons, um... Uh, PTSD reasons or other mental health reasons or just like if you want to like occasionally like toke up or something like that it's a super good show CBD has come out of nowhere <coughs> in just a few short years I, I mean who cares like who cares I came out of nowhere I mean honestly it's it's not like anyone's like fucking hurt, hurting anyone over it. It's so stupid. Today is love. The U.S. took it off its list of controlled substances, and that sparked a buzz. Celebrities like Martha Stewart jump on board. I mean, the U.S. also put like fucking pot into like its highest category of like illegal drugs, alongside with like crack. It's because Reagan wanted to. Ronald Reagan wanted to stop the massive protests against, you know, the Vietnam Wars that was going on because it was like a lot of hippies 
like protesting outside of like the White House or whatever, and smoking a bunch of pot, and being and and, and saying peace, not war, brother. Like, are you really gonna take the? Are you really gonna take the U.S.'s word for it? Like, the only other drug that I can think of that's in that highest tier is crack, but that's also because, you know, they want to throw more blacks and or black people in jail. Because cocaine is essentially the same thing, but, you know, in the States, it's not as... It doesn't give you as long as a punishment. It's just, you know, how you consume it. Instead of, like, snorting it, you just shoot it up in a needle which i mean still is pretty bad don't get me wrong they absolutely deserve all the help that they can get and resources that they can get but like it also doesn't help that you know the war on drugs was a gigantic failure and the cia funneled like a bunch of crack into black neighborhoods as well I am launching a new line of CBD products. I'll leave the THC offerings to Snoop. Laws change in Canada around the same time. But when marijuana <coughs> is legalized, CBD becomes a controlled substance under the new Cannabis Act. That means strict rules on possession, production, and who gets to sell it. Advertising and branding are prohibited. So is talk of any health benefits. Wait, no claims of health benefits? Bro, that is so wild. And branding are prohibited. Like, so is talk. Like, there are 100% uh, health benefits of, of, of doing pot. Like, it's so stupid to me that can't... Like, like, the advertising and branding, I get, like, because, you know, you could easily do it towards children, right? And... I, I do think that is a way, or I do think that is something that we should control. Like, it's the same thing with, like, say, tobacco to children or alcohol to children. Like, it it, it doesn't matter, though, because, you know, the teens are going to be teens. They're going to break rules. Yeah, that's that's one of the misconceptions that people tend to think. Like, whenever, like, THC comes up... Everyone seems to think it makes you aggressive. It either makes you incredibly aggressive or it, like, makes you just, like, want to fucking do nothing. But, like, I I'm not, like, saying that everyone should do pot. But, like, there are certain aspects to it that are actually beneficial to people. Like, it helps war veterans, for example, with PTSD. It helps... It's sort of like a coping mechanism for them. Oh yeah, for it's done so for me as well. It's helped me with anxiety. It's helped me with sleep. It's helped me with some pain. But that's just crazy to me. Of any health benefits. But tell that to places like this, a trendy wellness store on Toronto's Queen West. It's not a licensed CBD retailer, but one of many unlicensed stores that have popped up in the face of demand and in defiance of the law. It's only popping up because the government can't actually supply the huge influx of people that want to smoke or, or drink their pot or or consume it that's why they're popping up because if something isn't <coughs> able to keep up it's just not going to you know you're gonna have people that are gonna want to compete that's just how it works when there's supply there's always going to be demand sleep is one thing i was not thinking weed would affect, but when I fall asleep, I, I woke up feeling super refreshed. I mean, yeah, like, I have, I've had the same thing experience as well, like, especially since I, I have really bad insomnia in, like, two different forms, like, it, it definitely has helped out a lot in, in some of those regards.
Here we are. Their signage makes it clear they sell CBD, so we head inside with hidden cameras to see what other rules they're breaking. Hi. Good, how are you? This place actually looks really nice, though. Reminds me a lot of, like, a vape store. In no time, the clerk is telling us how CBD can help with health problems, the kind of talk <laughs> the government has banned. She's... But she's, like, actually right about that, though. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of figured as much. But no, like... There are some effects of like the non-THC part that actually do help out with pain, like like pain or like or mental problems or other things like that. So like it's silly that like she'd get in trouble for this. I mean, unfortunately, I think her company is gonna gonna get shut down because you know she's talking about about all this stuff. And it's, you know, on on here. So, of course, it's going to get closed. So, CBD helps with inflammation in your body. And that could be something topical, like skin rashes, psoriasis, acne, wrinkles, sun damage, etc. And then we do have tinctures, which are like oil droppers for stress, anxiety, insomnia, anything to do with your internal system. Then we find another big no-no products with health claims right on the label. For instance, Relieve CBD Pain Serum is formulated to relieve joint pain, back pain, muscle tension, stiffness, inflammation, and swelling. I have some like lower back pain from my kids. Like, Would that work on that? 100%. I get upper back pain because I'm like hunched over my desk all day, and I put this on in 15 minutes, it feels like relief. To say it's 100% effective is misleading. Like... <laughs> That's one thing I do kind of agree with, though. Like, nothing's going to be 100%. Nothing is. So, that's already misleading, but that's just how marketing works. So, like, <clears throat> saying that, you know, it's... <coughs> Saying that that's a bad thing, I mean, you should also be paying attention to, like, some of the other, you know, things as well that, or, or some of the other uh, companies as well, and, you know, but they don't get punished. It's just because when it comes to cannabis, there's still a giant stigma <clears throat> around it, even though it's legalized. That's marketing, not evidence. Jason Bussa researches medicinal He's right, by the cannabis way. at McMaster University in Hamilton. He is alarmed by what we show him. So, so you're seeing a number of problems in these clips where claims are being made when they're not supposed to be made, and then they're exaggerated beyond belief. But, but you literally just said that's how marketing works. Like, which one is it? You can't have it both ways, my guy. And far in excess of where we have evidence to support. Bussa says there's little proof that topical creams or serums can even penetrate skin, let alone relieve pain. Like, <coughs> when it comes to, like, the creams and stuff, like, I don't really understand that. It, it, it reminds me of, like, fucking crystal mommies, like, saying if you shove a, uh, I don't know, like, an amethyst up your pussy, you're gonna cure all diseases. Like, it's so stupid. Like, I do think that CBD does have some <laughs> some medical uses, but, like, I, I don't know. I just wouldn't inherently trust this being, what, what she would be saying. A true statement would be there might be a minority of individuals that will find some benefit. We've got very little evidence as to whether these topical preparations work and whether CBD <laughs> in isolation works. Take a look at what we heard in this store. We show Bussa another visit we make to another unlicensed retailer selling CBD. Hi, how are you? Here we meet a clerk who assures us we've got nothing to worry about. Just from what I've heard, it depends on your situation, but it'll help flip anything. Like for me, sometimes I have problems falling asleep and then staying asleep. So whatever your body needs, whatever the situation is, CBD will help that. It's like it can do anything, really. Kind of like a superpower almost, but with no like negative effects on your body. 
There's no, is there no side effects? Like negative side I, I'm sure that there are some, <coughs> some side effects r regardless of how, of how um, minor they might be. But like medicine has some side effects as well. And like by law, you're required to hear some of the, or hear the side effects that, that some medicines give you, like whether it be like vaccines or like suppositories or whatever. To a certain point, I mean, I, I don't think doing heroin in moderation would be, would be good. Side effects, the, I guess the worst thing that could possibly happen is it not working. <coughs> That's not the worst thing that could happen. So anytime you take an active product, and I would include CBD in that category, it has the potential to have benefits. It also has the potential to cause harms. We know that there is some risk. We know that it can interact with some medications that people take. The worry okay, is no about heroin. <laughs> how CBD interacts with medications that are metabolized in the liver, including blood thinners, antidepressants, opioids, benzodiazepines, anti-seizure drugs, and chemotherapy. I mean, you shouldn't be mixing substances anyways. Like, it's so silly. Like, it, I mean, yeah, of course you're going to have some uh some things that or some people that are going to end up mixing things but like for the most part like i don't think too many people are going to be mixing like cbd with like any of these other things because I, I think for the most part a lot of people that are going to be using that won't really won't really do any of these other things unless they absolutely have to but if that is the case, you should be asking your doctor on on like what the side effects of your medications are and like if there is anything that you shouldn't be mixing with it. We do an opioid opioid when it is grown the right way. Well, yeah, absolutely. Like it like if I remember correctly, I think CBD is like the stuff that helps with like pain and stuff but like we don't have enough information about it because even though it's legal we can't like actually research it like if they would actually if they were actually able to focus on it i'm sure that they would actually have a better understanding about the, like the effects and everything and you know being able to know what it does but this opi opioids are different. It's more like pills. I am willing to test, be a test subject if it means doing a lot of weed. Poggers. I mean science. <laughs> yeah, Bussa science says, reasons. Even if CBD is generally safe, <laughs> there's no one regulating black market products. How concerned should consumers be about that black market CBD and what's actually in it? Well, I think they should be concerned for a couple of reasons. One, we know that in, there have been cases where you can get contaminants on board of these products. Uh, heavy metals, lead, for example, uh, microbes, pesticides, molds. But that's because there's no regulations for it because you're not uh, allowing... Or it's only you only have like one place you can go to and people are still going to be wanting these things. Like it's it's nothing new. That's just how it works. It's of that nature. The other issue is they might be ending up getting THC on top of the CBD that they knew about. <coughs> and of course, THC can impair your ability to, to drive or to do other things require concentration. And if it has... I mean, sometimes THC helps out with concentration, though. Like, like doing sometimes doing pot like actually helps your concentration like if it's like a small amount then absolutely but if you're doing like copious amounts of it i mean of course it's gonna impair you like no but like no one who actually like gets stoned out of their mind is gonna be driving anyways so it doesn't matter as much less cbd than they actually paid for it might be below the point that it could have any therapeutic benefit so there's a number of reasons to be concerned about these black but but i mean 
pharmacies do the exact same thing. We just have like a higher standard than the states does, though. Black market. It would be bad practices to poison your buyers, so black market sales would have to check for it. I mean, absolutely. Like, you're going to want to have returning customers, right? So, I mean, of course, but like... <coughs> it's stupid, but like, people can still like overdose from like, painkillers, for example, which has unironically, like... It's legal, it, like it's been legalized and it's given through like prescriptions and everything, but we still have like a massive opioid epidemic, especially like in places like British Columbia, for example, and like that's been on the uptick due to COVID, which is really sad. Products, which is exactly why we want to test all these products. But it's not going to happen. Gotta go. Go. Our lawyers tell us we shouldn't even have this stuff in our possession. Cheap or not, I gotta go. They insist we turn it over to police, even though Canadians across the country are buying these things every day. We wanted to test black market products to see what was in them, but our lawyers told us that they're too illegal, so we're not allowed to do that. But we ran into the same issue. We also wanted to do testing of these products, and we got the same advice from our legal people that you did. These products can be acquired by anyone in Canada with an internet connection and a, uh, you know, a credit card, but you can't actually test what all these people are using, which seems very counterintuitive. We're not allowed to test CBD, but the U.S. Food and Drug Administration does. More than half of products they look at that actually kind of surprises me, though. Because I think pot is still illegal there. And, like... Since it's illegal there, <clears throat> they can't really test any of the effects of CBD. Like, if it... Like, whether it be, like, positive or negative. I mean, yeah, like, California is probably the biggest example of that. But, like, do you really think, like, somewhere like fucking Kansas would have it legal you're crazy that contain an amount of cbd that's different from what the label says and almost half contain thc that isn't supposed to be there <laughs> that's what happens with starlet simon in fredericton back in 2019 she uses cbd to treat her anxiety but when she buys a new batch at an unlicensed retailer it comes with a twist i was really high so um i didn't know that I was high. I thought there was something like significantly wrong with me. I thought maybe I was having like a psychosis. I thought maybe there was like uh, some kind of serious medical problem. I didn't even suspect the CBD oil. A friend tells her to send it to this lab that specializes in testing cannabis. The results are surprising. No, there was not supposed to be any THC in that CBD oil. I believe it was advertised as less than 0.5 milligrams per mil of THC. What we found was, for total THC, 11.5 milligrams per mil. Well, the thing is, is that these, <coughs> these like, these black market play, uh, companies don't have the proper equipment to, like, actually produce, like, the, uh, the, the right, <coughs> the right amount, so, like, I mean, of course, there's going to be a higher percentage, but like, like the advertising part of it is also like kind of silly to me. Like, I mean, of course that there's going to be like, of course they're going to say it's lower. And we found absolutely no CBD in that oil. He says it's buyer beware when it involves a black market, which makes us wonder why Health Canada isn't doing more to rein in illegal <laughs> products when it does so much to control the legal side. Like this place. <coughs> so when we make a new product, we want to test the potency as we make it. We're inside Metafarm, a licensed producer in Barrie, Ontario, with President Keith Strong. Welcome to our incoming material secure storage area. Okay, the first thing that hits you is a smell. Yep, there's uh, you can tell what's probably in these totes. Here we have our starting material. Holy, oh, that's a lot of pot. Like, could you imagine, like, Owning that much pot, like, geez. 
Whoa, baby, that is a lot of weed. Oh, Lee, that's that's full of bags like that. Oh my goodness, my guy. You like the smell of weed? I I personally don't. That's one of the main reasons why I don't choose to smoke. And you know, smoke inhaling a bunch of like charred stuff isn't good for you either. But like, so wait, that means all of these, all all these totes have at least. A cup, like I want to say, at least five bags of of pot with that amount. Two, two kilograms. I, I'm against cannabis, vaping too. Two thousand grams. Wow. Because of stuff like these box loads of cannabis. Because you're still are inhaling stuff. Box fulls of oils and concentrates, vapables, edibles, tinctures, and gel caps, and plenty of CBD. Here they take security and quality very seriously. This is our secure storage area where we keep finished and in between goods. But one thing about vaping is I do think that vaping just in general is be way better for you than smoking. <clears throat> Even though you're inhaling like a bunch of a bunch of crap and chemicals and for the most part when it comes to vaping it does actually help out people get off of smoking and a big reason with that is because I have a lot of friends that vape and because and they used to smoke and my brother uh, used to smoke as well and he vapes now one of the big reasons on why uh oh yeah i'm not saying that it's not but it compared to smoking it's way less severe <laughs> but like one thing that actually helps uh, a decent amount of people to get off of uh off of like tobacco and more on to like a a, a cleaner alternative is like the fruit the fruit flavors like <clears throat> <coughs> like remember that time when they wanted to um make fruit fruit flavors like illegal because they thought that you know kids would start to vape like start to 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 vape the irony in that is though is that when it comes to like a, a vape store or something like that or even i, I think like even probably like some of these uh, these quote-unquote black market uh cbd places is i imagine that you're gonna have to show your id to prove that you're over the age of 18 <laughs> because when i uh <clears throat> when i go pick up like some vapors and stuff like if I mean of course I'm I need but like I do think that vaping is a a stepping stone to getting off of tobacco which is really really bad for you so what's this this would be CBD in its purest form this is really great for patient products so they what, wait CBD is <laughs> CBD is white. Are, are you sure it's not like coke, my guy? So that they're not getting any THC. Metafarm makes its products for licensed retailers and medical markets all over the world, and that means following an expensive protocol of testing and quality control dictated by Health Canada. <laughs> so one lot of oil is actually this much paperwork. Wow. Oh, we're taking oh my god everything from incoming <laughs> that is a huge pile of paperwork that is crazy i feel sorry for whoever has to do that much paperwork just for like one bottle of cbd that's crazy <laughs> id is something that is required before you make any purchase i mean when it comes to more illicit substance substances whether that be like uh, pot or 
or vape juice or or alcohol or tobacco yeah but i mean like that should be mandatory either way regardless of if you're if you're doing things legally or illegally and like <coughs> yeah it's just silly material milling uh the extraction process the the formulation process and all the end testing not the kind of thing you're likely to see on the black market i, I mean the black market the or these these quote-unquote black market uh, places actually do have like paperwork that they fill out though it's just not extensive as that It's, it's like maybe, if I remember, I think it's like maybe about like that much from what I remember from like weeds. <clears throat> but I, I think that some, some places that sell illegally do have like mountains of paper like that though. I, I could be wrong on that. Many of the illegal sites we visit do offer test results, <laughs> though it's not always clear if every batch they sell is tested. And some sites give results that are years out of date. But I, I mean, like, other places do that too. Like, pharmaceutical companies do that too. Most cannabis retailers are, in fact, legal. But we discover they're not always following the rules either. <clears throat> A lot of Canadians are buying their CBD from licensed dispensaries as they're supposed to. Well, yeah, because, like, people are going to want to, like, <clears throat> either buy from, like, a trusted place, whether that be, like, a dealer that they've been going to for years, or whether it be, like, a government institution. Like... <clears throat> It, it hurts more for, like, you know, bad practices in any industry to, you know, not promise what what's advertised, which is why when it's, like, more government centralized or if it's, like, tr someone trusted that you've been going to for a while, I mean, of course, you're going to be going to there. Because when given the opportunity, most people are going to be doing, are going to be buying things the legal way. That's just how it is. But what they're not supposed to be getting is medical advice from these so-called bud tenders. Take a look. Can't really talk too much about the medicinal stuff here, um, but there have been a lot of studies to show that there are quite a lot of medicinal benefits from CBD. He's just making a suggestion. He's not saying, or he's not saying that there are any benefits so he is technically following following the law <clears throat> he's just saying that there have been some studies linked to medical benefits towards cbd he's not saying that he personally thinks that they're that they're right and a lot of studies have shown that the oils the ingestible oils are the best way to sort of get the medicinal benefits from them he started off giving the right advice I can't give you medical advice about these products. And then one second later, he then proceeded to give all this medical advice about the product. So you can't have it both ways. To be fair, these salespeople are being asked every day about the health claims being made by these products. So what should they say? Because people want to know. People want to know if there are like any health benefits and whatnot. So, I mean, of course, they're going to say there have been some studies linked to uh, CBD being uh, beneficial in some medical capacity, which it, there is some inherent truth to that. The responsible answer to that would be, I'm not able to give you that kind of advice. You're going to have... And most people do give that advice, though. So, like, I, from, like, what, I, <laughs> what I've encountered, most, most do give that advice. 
they will always suggest, you know, talking to your doctor or, you know, stuff like that. Getting weed from a government controlled place is safer. Is a safer way to get high than not getting in trouble from the law. But I mean, like, there are, like, some instances where, like, <coughs> government control isn't necessarily always, always safer, though. Because, like, <clears throat> there are some places that, you know, do... Like... Oh, excuse me. There are some places where it's not inherently true, especially with a lot of the political unrest in the country, especially as of now. And, like, if you've had... If you had, like, a trustworthy dealer... Why would you, you know, not support them, right? You have to talk to your doctor or healthcare provider about it, but you can see that that's not happening. <laughs> Did a delicate dance around the rules, it seems. I mean, you look, you only looked at one instant, instance, my guy. You're kind of twist, twist, twisting the truth. Most people will be like, I, I don't... <clears throat> I think you should talk to your doctor about, like, any of the health benefits or whatever, or if there even is any, and if you should be doing it, like, most do. Because, like, I I'm sorry, but when it comes to, like, some guy in, like, a pot store, I'm not going to be taking his medical advice over my doctor's, for example. I mean, yeah, that, that is true. That is another reason why people will go, <clears throat> may go to like some of these more illegal, uh, quote unquote, Ill illegal places, whether it be like a CBD store or like buying from a dealer, it, it can 100% be cheaper. It wasn't that delicate. They say you should consult a doctor before trying it, so that's exactly what I'm about to do. My personal experience with CBD. I'm back uh, on my CBD regimen, looking to focus... Well, my man's gonna do pot oil on national TV. What a legend. ...on uh, how it helps me sleep. I mean, it, the thing is, is it, is it may not even help you sleep, my guy. Like, pot affects people differently. So it may not even help you help you sleep. So, because, like, everyone's experience is different. <coughs> this is your marketplace. Canada's legalization of cannabis has created illegal fallout and a lot of consumer confusion. I mean, we always get it from, like, literally the dispensaries that are licensed by Ontario. I guess. I don't know, actually. That's what I mean. Like, a lot of people tend to want to buy through more legal means. So. <clears throat> so, like, if the opportunity is given to them, of course they're going to be doing so, because then they won't be breaking the law. I want to know how, <clears throat> know what he says, because some of it could be lies. I mean, absolutely. <coughs> they will absolutely try and spin some stuff and be like, oh no, like, I had a, a bad experience with CBD, and like, it didn't help me sleep at all, or like, it didn't give, it didn't help me with any of my pain, like, like, pot affects people differently. I mean, I am too, but, like, I, I have a feeling that he's gonna say that it didn't- it either didn't help him, or it did help him a little bit. That's- that's what I have a feeling he's gonna say. So now do I think about it? We've bought CBD products from a black market that is thriving, and seems legit. Is there anything that doesn't help? I'm not sure. Obesity? Whiplash? Products that come with no gear. But, like, there are some inherent benefit or, or truths to that, though. Like, if you've experienced, like, a lot of pain and 
need a less severe like pain painkiller or you can't necessarily get uh access to like uh, some painkillers because of your medication that you're already taking cbd might actually help with that guarantees of what you're getting and sales pitches that are misleading and against the rules that's just marketing baby which is why before you try you're supposed to see a doctor Dr. Hans Clark is an anesthesiologist. I didn't, brother, and, and I know how it affects me. Services at Toronto General Hospital. So, uh, what brings you in to see us? I got two small kids who treat me like a playground. It's uh, taking its toll on my <laughs> fatherhood. Let's maybe just do a quick physical examination. Dr. Clark runs a study here that looks at how well medical cannabis can treat chronic pain, insomnia, anxiety, and depression. All right, so I just need you but to like, let me know. It, there have there actually have been connections that cannabis does help with that though <laughs> so like if my guy here says that like it hasn't helped him at all with like anything that he's been experiencing then i then it's just not for him there are other ways th there are other things that can help him with that know if you feel anything tender as I move down your back. We discuss my medical history, how pain is affecting me, any other drugs I'm on. You just touch your toes for me if you could. All this before we even talk about CBD as an option. Okay, so Nothing like the Never went to the visit. doctor before doing do weed. Kind of want to move You're forward. Fine. I mean, with uh, coping. I mean, if you are on like other medications, you still probably should. But if not, like, I don't see a problem with not going to, to your doctor about it. Like, if you do it, like, a couple times and, <clears throat> you know, you just, if it's not for you, then you don't really have to do it. The pain. You know, just hoping to get something that makes it go away, but on a more natural side. I show Dr. Clark some legal CBD products I order from Shoppers Drug Mart. After talking with a nurse practitioner... Wait, Shoppers sells pot? What? That's new to me. I didn't think Shoppers sell, sold pot. I mean, pot can absolutely be addictive. Because anything can become addictive. Whether it be, like, stuff like uh you know that you consume whether it be like cannabis or alcohol or things like <coughs> you know like porn or or social media anything can become addictive under the right circumstances for medical documents you have a cream and an oil and a gel is there one that works better than the other so these are great questions so ultimately the problem we face in canada the problem we face in the world is we don't have the data to reliably answer those questions and the and he is absolutely right about this it's because like it's been uh illegal for such a long time and the government prohibits like research on uh, CBD and THC and as well as being heavily stigmatized so he is absolutely right about that you put it like that it makes a lot of sense I mean yeah like anything can be an addiction This doctor absolutely is right. There is not enough research on how uh, THC and and stuff and uh, CBD and stuff like that affect you. <clears throat> because we're only like now starting to discover some of the uh, effects of it. Questions. And because there's no reliable data on proper CBD dosage, the general mantra is to start low and go slow. We decide on five milligrams of CBD. I mean, that's how you're supposed to do anything, though. Because you're always supposed to start in low do doses. 
Because, <coughs> like, when it comes to, like, alcohol, for example, of course you're going to build up a tolerance to it, and it's going to take you a lot more to get drunk. And, like, I don't see why why pot would be any different. CBD oil twice a day. To Hopefully they give some, re some resources on how to help with that research. It would be great. I mean, what you do is you you legalize it and then not punishing those who actually do research into the different effects of whether that be good or bad into the into it but like the the one thing that's really weird to me is like i, I think it's still like illegal to like actually do research on uh, on the chemical compounds that are in marijuana so and like that frustrates like that actually frustrates like medical professionals because they want to know how they react with different pharmaceuticals so that they can pers uh, so that they know how to prescribe to start by about three to four weeks we'll have you at a place where either you can understand whether this is a product that can be useful to you or not and i will getting a large group study can help with the finding of effects on your body i mean absolutely that's <coughs> that is common medical procedure though like it was also the case with the the covid vaccine as well Will also 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 tell my patients that you know on average you're probably looking to spend a hundred to a hundred fifty dollars a month on cannabis products if depending on where you're going it also depends on where you're going you find something that is useful so it's definitely not cheap it is not cheap and let's remember there's no utopia i would say maybe one in three individuals might find benefit from this good aroma that's actually a lot higher than i thought it would that that's actually a lot higher than I, what I thought he was gonna say. I thought he was gonna say that it was gonna be like one in five or one in ten, not one in three. That actually surprises me. That's a lot. It benefits. It sounds like it benefits a lot more people than than it hurts. <laughs> Here it goes. <coughs> not much in the flavor department. No. It, it doesn't taste very good. No, it kind of tastes like you're... Yeah, it makes me happy and or, or tired and go to bed. So, will I find benefit? If anecdotal evidence is mostly all we've got, why not add my two cents? <laughs> all right, here we go. Let's see what he has to save. I wasn't feeling an effect after the first uh, little while. So lately I've been doing it just before sleep, but in the middle of the day it also, I find it helps a little bit at this new dosage, so... My guy is just like ingesting like so much pot oil in like the middle of the street. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. That's how it should be. So the back pain that I initially started off with that I talked to Dr. Clark about seems to have kind of faded away. And I don't know if that's because of the CBD or I mean, I bought a new mattress. I mean, it's probably a mixture of both of them as like a new mattress would definitely help out with with some of your back pain and cbd does ten, does tend to have some uh some pain uh pain reduction relief when it comes to when it comes to it recently as i continue to track results we're learning even approved cbd like i'm on can be used in ways that are not approved <laughs> Whoever this is is getting their dog high. Don't don't give your don't give your doggo pot. How CBD saved George's life. And we're fighting for answers from Health Canada. Will they fix a broken system? I mean it's not really too broken. I mean it's just as broken as like every other system though. And so like I, I don't know what he's going on about. This is your marketplace. Our investigation into how CBD is sold. 
<laughs> Please do not drug your pets. I mean, I give catnip to my cat, so like my so like when I when I get high, I guess my cat can get high too. <laughs> And regulated is but you shouldn't be giving drugs to your path. So Georgia's a silent shepherd. She's nine years old. <laughs> With Georgia. You shouldn't be doing you shouldn't be giving uh, human drugs to your pets and you shouldn't be consuming animal drugs like yourself. Like remember the I ivermectin stuff or whatever it was, like the the dewormering paste that people were ingesting for COVID. <laughs> But what if I want to smoke catnip, though? <laughs> or, but yeah, like, remember when people were eating, like, <laughs> apple-flavored horse dewormer, and, like, they were shitting their intestines out? That's, that was crazy. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, why not? It's, it's probably, like, the same genus as cannabis. And her owner, Robin Golding of Whitby, Ontario. She has been in great health her whole life until January of this year when she was out for a walk and she took a misstep and ended up tearing her ACL, the dog version of her ACL. They try expensive surgery. Poor doggo. That doesn't Poor doggo. That's sad. Help and complications follow. Her vet says the best option is to put Georgia down. No, don't put the doggo down. That's so sad. I was actually um, like devastated, of course, but also shocked thinking like, how did we get from a leg injury to you should euthanize your dog? Robin searches for someone who can do an end of life treatment. <laughs> I send Milo to, for the dog only for the and only for the dog. Yeah, I mean, like no one wants to put down their dog like a dog is like well pets are like family though so of course no one wants to put them down they want to do everything that they can to make sure they have a a happy and healthy life and as long as the life as they can and finds a whole new option she now gives georgia cbd good girl i mean to a certain humans, point yes but robin says they've helped save her dog's life We've seen great results. It's a big part of her treatment plan. Having an open mind really, really, really helped our, our dog have more quality of life and longer life. The way the law stands, there are no CBD pet products approved for sale anywhere in Canada, though you can find them everywhere, online and in store. There's sweet potato treats, and these are beef liver treats. It's really good for situational anxiety, like say your dog has to go to the vet. I mean, I guess, I guess dogs are a lot, have a cl way closer uh, lifestyle than we, as we do, than we thought. Because, I mean, if, if our pod is affecting them, I don't see, I don't really see why they shouldn't be able to do pod either. Instead of risking illegal pet products, veterinarian Dr. Sarah Silcox suggests using the legal CBD meant for humans. How's she been doing? I mean, if if a vet is suggesting it, like, <clears throat> I don't know the uh, the validity. Uh, I can't speak today. I I don't know the validity of <clears throat> what she's saying, and like if it actually is true or not. But like, there needs to be more research, a lo uh, in dogs, let alone humans, to know what the effects are. Good, good, really good. Good. I saw her out front and it looked like she was doing really well. Hello, sweetie. Can you just let me take a quick look at you here, kiddo? Dr. Silcox likes natural therapies like CBD, though she's <coughs> only allowed to offer guidance. She seems nice and comfortable, which is so important, right? Her advice, avoid the black market. We have had studies that have gone around and gathered some of these products. I mean, of course she would suggest taking the legal alternative. She doesn't want to get in trouble. I mean, it just makes sense that she would say something like that. From online sites and pet stores and grooming shops and had them analyzed. And so we know there's the potential for contaminants. But the other concern is that oftentimes they have inflated health claims about what those products may do. She's head of a group called the Canadian Association of Veterinary Cannabinoid Medicine. 
that's pushing for change. What would you like to see happen with CBD? I would really love to see uh, veterinarians able to authorize a full range of cannabis products, and those products would require a certain level of studies to show both their safety and efficacy. And I think that would give a lot of veterinarians and pet families that comfort that they need. That ne I, I do agree with that. Like, if there are benefits to giving your pet cannabis, like if they're in a lot of pain, for example, I, I think that, you know, a, a vet should be... It, uh, able to authorize that unfortunately there aren't too many studies into that if if at all because <clears throat> there are hardly any studies to you know to humans for example need for more proof is echoed by medical doctors is the lack of science what's holding back a lot of doctors the science is it absolutely the science absolutely is holding back a lot of doctors from prescribing it it's a mixture of that and stigma. <laughs> Find something that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Is what we always hang our hat on in <clears throat> medicine in terms of what are those randomized control trial findings? Show me that it works better than a placebo. And until we can get some of that data, which we are handcuffed right now to get. Which is really unfortunate because <clears throat> there, I'm sure that there are absolutely benefits of uh, doctors prescribing cannabis like to to veterans to help with their PTSD to for people that have had a really bad injury and can't take uh like tr more traditional painkillers or stuff like or, or other instances like that that's when we can actually be certain about what we're doing those calls for change the illegal sales, the misleading claims, we share it all with Health Canada, but they don't want to come on camera. They tell us they are reviewing the Cannabis Act, but won't be done until about spring 2023. The retailers we visit and contact for response mostly just ignore us. The licensed Tokyo Smoke franchise says it tries to give customers info that follows the rules, and it will continue to educate its workers. And as for me, it does seem to have lessened uh, that lower back pain that I was feeling, and so maybe it is having an effect overall. It was expensive, about a hundred bucks a month, but not hard to get legal CBD. Seems that, you know, I still got some really restful, relaxing sleep, waking up refreshed. And, and that might be why some people are turning to non-government uh, partnered places, is because it's probably a little bit cheaper. Because $100 a month is actually quite a lot. The hard part is telling if it really <coughs> made a difference. My man. I think my man's going to be doing a, a bunch more pot now. What's this? One scammers. This is your marketplace. Want to see that Exclusive access. Catching the scammers in our backyard. It certainly helped that the CBC did their expose or episode on uh, Marketplace. First, the CRA scam. Calling you from Revenue Agency CRA. I paid them all the money I had. The inside story from India. We were trained like that to pretend to be like an IRS officer. Then, tracking the tech support scam. Why do you do this illegally? What does it say that we were able to get inside? Calls for action. Make sure that Canadians are protected against organized criminals in India. And the scam. Oh my god. Fucking conservatives. Scams won't stop. They're money laundering. CRA scam. Text. You could have needed a higher dose to actually get a stronger effect, but that could lead to addiction. I mean, yeah, but like. His doctor did s suggest him starting off with a lower dosage and seeing how it affects him before he moves on to a higher dosage. Like, I do agree with that. But he's just following what his doctor had recommended, which which is a good thing. Support scam, sin scam, <coughs> all connected, feeding on each other's leads. Revealed only on your marketplace. 
just outside Toronto, federal agents are gearing up. We got the arrest scripts, you're all ready to go. After okay. months of investigation, they're about to carry out key arrests. When he comes out, we'll be ready for him. Cracking down on an inter... <laughs> oh, fuck. I love Canadian cops, man. They're gathering outside of a fucking Walmart and talking about, like, how they're gonna bust these criminals. This is awesome. <laughs> International scam targeting Canadians. Make sure he's properly secured for safety on all. <laughs> like, who who does this? Like, who meets outside of a Walmart just to discuss like their plan? Like, you have an you have a place to do that, my my guy. Like, jeez. We have exclusive access to witness this takedown. All right, it's two a.m. We've just got the call we've been waiting months to receive. We knew the Mounties have been watching alleged scammers, and now they tell us they're ready to move in. In some ways, this began two years ago with an investigation of our own on the other side of the world. My name is Dennis Gray, calling you from Revenue Agency CRA. It's a scam Canadians know all too well. I love the dramatic music and like whenever like things pop off they just like and with the music they just like zoom in it's great a meeting room is what is that for privacy is something they've never heard of I mean yeah I mean if they want to meet out in like the Walmart parking lot and discuss like confidential stuff by all means they can do that I think I think it's good that uh, that they're getting a little bit of fresh air. They could probably use it. Agency filed a lawsuit against your name. Not the real Canada Revenue Agency, but one of the largest cyber schemes in Canadian history. There will be legal consequences, and you will be arrested to defraud the government. As we work to locate the scam centers in Mumbai, India. We met up with a whistleblower who previously worked inside one, Jayesh Dubey. It was big money. Yeah, it was big money. More and than I you would make it. anywhere else. I cannot make it anywhere now. Easy to read the script, threaten the person on the other end of the line, all while impersonating <coughs> an American tax agent. Thank you for calling IRS. How may I help you? So we were trained like that. To I mean, even the Joker doesn't fuck around with the IRS, though. So, like... If he doesn't want to mess around with them, like, why would anyone else want to? Become an IRS officer to pretend to be like an IRS officer. You're threatening people. Yeah, You're saying me. they could go to jail, <laughs> they could get arrested. You could get arrested if you try to fight uh, against the IRS, then the penalty is $75,000, which you can uh, never pay, and your assets and all is going to get freezed. We track calls like that to a scam center inside this building. But when our local helpers knock on the door... So the, the call center has moved out. They, they, some, they realized someone was onto them. It turns out the danger is still there. I mean... This is actually getting kind of, uh, kind of interesting. I kind of want to... Uh, read his texts but i don't really want to do it right now so it's now clear to us this area is dangerous that we need to get out that we're being watched <clears throat> uh, and that the people who went into the building for us they're being followed it all shows how dangerous these scammers can be why do you think they were following you i guess still the work is going because he's a whistleblower and they knew he did it that's why they're following him but not at that place. We still have questions. How do the scammers know who to call? How do they get money from victims? Could it be there's an accomplice at the Yeah, and to tie up loose ends too. That's true. Jahangir Rashidi has those same questions. How did this start? With one call, phone call. They call and they said, this is Revenue Canada and Government of Canada lawsuit you for $99,500. What did you think when you heard? It's a huge amount. I said, I don't have it. He said, go and borrow from the bank. 
Go to your friend. Go to your employee. Go wherever you can make money. Doesn't matter. Just you have to pay. You have to pay. You I mean, why would the government, like, file a lawsuit about, against this guy? Like, this guy doesn't have that kind of money. Like, I, I know it's a scam, but, like... This guy, this guy knows for a fact that, or should know for a fact that, you know, the government wouldn't file a lawsuit against him. It's just silly. He's from Iran, where the government actually does make demands like this. And, and that is true. Iran does do that to a certain point. He worried the call was legit and paid big. 110,000 altogether. 45,000 was my RSP. <coughs> And then $5,000 my saving account, $4,000 for my last paycheck checking account, $5,000 from... My guy makes a decent amount of money, $4,000 from his last paycheck? My son, and the rest, credit card, line of credit. His life savings, gone. I mean, it's sad that that guy fell for that. Back in India. So how long have you been police commissioner here? Top cop Parambir Singh says the scam kingpins are leading a rich life. One of the main accused, he had a very, very high profile lifestyle. <coughs> he was probably thinking of buying a private jet also at that point of time. A private jet? He was thinking of buying one, yes. Funded by millions stolen from victims living in North America. And Commissioner Singh has another shot. I'm just going to say it. North America is the dumbest continent. We are the dumbest continent. We fall, we fall for the most stupid stuff. Whether that be in politics or or even stuff like this, it's we we fall for the stupidest stuff. Talker about police in Canada. Nobody contacted us from Canada. No one's contacted. No one, no <laughs> one contacted. American authorities did contact us. No one contacted. Although on the website of RCMP, yeah. we did see a post relating to our cases once. But but you're telling me sixty thousand people at least have complained in Canada, and nobody from Canada no, has told nobody you anything. Con nobody contacted. And the only way you found out about it is by going on the RCMP website yourself? That's right, yeah. That doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right. <clears throat> when our story airs across Canada, there is outrage. Can the public safety minister explain why Canadians have to depend on the CBC to unearth this scam and protect Canadians? Will why do boomers have to rely on the CBC in order to not get scammed and end up falling for massive scams? Will the Prime Minister tell us how we will follow up to ensure that these calls stop and to make sure that Canadians are protected against organized criminals in India? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Payla. Mr. Speaker, we trust our security services and intelligence agents to do what needs to be done uh, to protect Canadians at home uh, and overseas. The irony is I don't think he's actually done anything about that. The RCMP later say they have been talking to India, but all this attention puts the issue on the front burner, empowering more people to come forward. This is really scary. <coughs> this is really scary. I fed them all the money I had. My stomach was just, it's sick. You feel sick. A month after our story, top brass order a special task force be set up at this secure facility outside Toronto. We get inside the headquarters for what the RCMP so called dramatic. Project Octavia. It's uh, essentially a, a national priority investigation. And Inspector Jim Ogden has a surprise. Certainly what I know and what I can share is that there are, uh, are known uh, targets, uh, leads. When we get enough evidence, uh, then we will charge and prosecute these individuals. And just so or, or you'll kill them.
I'm clear, are we talking about people who are in this country, in Canada? That's correct. Who are helping carry out this scam? That's correct. They're like, no shot that the RCMP does not get help <clears throat> from, like, the FBI or something like that in order to, like, uh, take, take out these individuals and then cover it up. Like, there's no shot. <laughs> there has there's no shot right they're defrauding the canadian public and sending it sending it away they're uh they're money laundering <coughs> while the mounties folk and how much do you want to bet like <clears throat> all these that are accused of of this this fraud stuff would at, at, or end up like being brown or something like that Focus on tracking the Canadians connected to this crime. Our trail took us back to India. A year after our first My man just wants to go to India the again. CRA scam. And we closed in on the call centers carrying out another one. This time, we had something up our sleeve. Hiring someone to sneak in a hidden camera. It's gotta end up well. We're the first to get inside. <laughs> the tech support scam with criminals using scare tactics to demand payment for a computer fix you likely don't need. Like, who is still falling for, like, <clears throat> these computer fixes? Like, who, who still falls for that? Like, you either have to be incredibly out of touch or incredibly stupid, right? Because there, are, there is just no way... <clears throat> there is just no way that people are actually still falling for that, right? What made you think this was legitimate? He sounded genuinely concerned and led me to believe that he could fix the problem when diane mcginn's facebook account stops working she calls up a the pale of facebook <laughs> um no like we need to teach the older generations how to identify scams and <clears throat> and what to do in those situations i mean usually i just hang up on them either that or i just completely like Walk around with them because it's fun. Why has this not been learned to address <clears throat> being addressed? Educate the public. Because they don't think it's that big of a deal. And like the only people it's actually affecting are like older people. <laughs> But like, and it's like really hard for like older people to also to like grasp on like a lot of the a lot of the tactics that uh, scammers use, whether that be like opening a link and like <clears throat> a uh, and an email you got, or like or, or just like really any link, or. You know, when it comes to like a phone call, like they rec they can record your call, and you know, edit your voice to make it so if you take them to court, you know they can uh, prove that uh, you had answered yes to certain questions, which is why I tend like if if I do decide to fuck around with like scammers. I tend not to say like yes or no and like give very uh what's the word like um like very non-conformant like answers and like there's this one YouTube channel that just completely fucks around with uh or with, with scammers and that's really funny be vague I mean, yeah, if you're going to do so, I mean, the, the ideal thing is like to either not click on the on whatever they're wanting to get you to click on or 
or to just like hang hang up. A number she thinks is for Facebook support. And like a general rule of thumb that I use is I tend to not answer uh, answer numbers I don't know. Because if if it's a number that I know, I will get I will get their their. Uh, if it's someone that I know, I will get their number and enter it in my phone. And if it's a num and if I'm not like expecting like a phone call or anything, I I just won't answer it. This is either just like spam or or uh, something like this. But ends up with a convincing scammer instead. When you look back on it now, how do you feel about it? I was vulnerable at the time, and I was impulsive. Yeah, and I feel very violated that they had access to everything on our computer i mean that's one of the ways that they get you though is <clears throat> they make it seem like incredibly urgent whether it be like threatening or whatnot in order to manipulate your emotions in order to for you to make a decision like without like critically thinking about it which is why you should always take a look or which is why like Generally, you shouldn't click on links you don't trust. Like, regardless of, like, what, uh, <clears throat> regardless of the site. And, like, Facebook is really bad for that, though, so I can't really say, I, I can't really say that I'm surprised that, like, anything has happened to like a bunch of old people that you still use facebook like who's who still uses facebook like let's be real our laws should protect us against things like this after months of our own investigation we're ready to confront those targeting canadians she's amazing to think it's now that's gonna go well my you're gonna it's either you're gonna be like assassinated or you're not gonna find out too much my guy right here back in india we've seen the scammers can be dangerous <coughs> so we're moving quickly right here this is the one we've been watching before. the company whose name is at this address says this they're doing such a terrible job with their hidden cameras they're having it like on like their waist or whatever i'm like bro come on uh, uh, that's so dumb like having one in like your bag, like in like a bag or something, would make a lot more sense. And like it, they're not small either; they're like at least that big. This is a legitimate operation, but we know some of the people inside are running a scam. <laughs> Why do you have a call center here? Why do you do this illegally? We want to talk to top bosses. <laughs> there are real victims. <laughs> real victims. These are real people who cannot afford to lose this money. Could you imagine just walking into a place that's known for scamming people? Oh my god, who puts their phone in their in their fucking polo shirt pocket? Who does that? Oh my god. Oh, this is hilarious. This is so funny. But like who who walks into like a known place? for scammers where a, a lot of like the, the people tend to be like violent and then like these are these are real people you can't do that i mean like oh this is this is so funny he just walks in and starts demanding <laughs> and starts making demands <laughs> who does this guy think he is i mean yeah right it's so funny Oh, this is great. You're taking it from me. <laughs> it seems no one here wants to talk to us. At least while we're here. I mean, why would people want to talk to you when you're just running in, like, shouting at them? They think that you're a deranged lunatic. Uh, I mean, yeah, no one's going to want to talk to you. They're most likely going to call the authorities. Here, they're off the phones. Anyone want to say anything? That's, that's probably because okay. he is. <laughs> I love how quickly he gave up and just left. Oh, that's so funny. Back 
in Canada, we share our findings <coughs> with the RCMP's highest ranking financial crimes official. <laughs> Bro, you found absolutely nothing. The only thing that you found is how psychotic you are. Just running into a, a, a place with like a bunch of workers and being like, what you're doing here is wrong. <laughs> it's hurting my feelings. Oh man, that's so funny. I, I think what would have been even funnier is like it was like an actual like company that outsourced like all their work like all their like telecom stuff to india and people just look at them being like b look at them being like what is this lunatic going on about that would have made if that is if that is the case that that makes things so much funnier sure. superintendent peter payne <laughs> what does it say that we were able to get inside a call center like this yeah no i applaud you he should have taken a hostage at the proof of his point. I mean, like, if someone runs into there, like, starts to make demands of being a psychopath like him, I'm fully expecting someone to, to take a hostage. But my man gave up so quickly. It was, it was so funny. How do your efforts for getting in there? But once again, police alone cannot uh, solve this issue. Uh, there's lots of call centers over there. <laughs> what do you say to the scammers? We're over there you think they're unstoppable uh we're not giving up this battle turns out that's a bit of foreshadowing the mounties know there are accomplices in canada they know who they are and we're about to find out too i have a feeling that they're gonna be like all brown and just like try and enforce like some racist tendencies to people from india <sighs> He had no confidence going into the situation. I mean, if my guy walked in there with like a little bit more swagger and like with his chest out being like, these are my demands and you're going to listen. <laughs> like he probably would have got clapped, but like still it would have. I, I think this was way better that he just went in there like screaming like a lunatic and then like 30 seconds later just leaving. I think that's way funnier. This is your marketplace. On the roads outside Toronto, a man has no idea police are on his tail. It absolutely was funnier. <laughs> the RCMP closing in on Canadians they say are accomplices in an enormous cyber scheme. And we're about to witness it all go down. We're just outside the RCMP's secure facility. After months of investigation into some of the largest cyber schemes in Canadian history, they're ready to take action. And these are schemes like- Bro, why didn't you, like, why didn't you go in with like, at, at the very least, like some form of body arm armor underneath your, your clothing, my guy, if you're gonna do something like that. Now he decides to put on like <laughs> that stuff, like a bulletproof vest, what a guy. Like the CRA scam. <laughs> My guy has massive balls. Tech support scam, the bank investigator scam, the SIN card <coughs> scam. All of it coming to a head early this morning. We started our investigation in uh, October of 2018. Inspector Jim Ogden oversees Project Octavia, the specialist unit investigating overseas <coughs> call center scams. My message is that uh, we'll find you and we'll, uh, we'll further investigate and we'll, uh, we'll charge where we can. We've traced many of these scams back to India. This is Brian calling you from Tech Center. Like the tech support scam. How much money was stolen? I sure hope he went into another building in India and did the exact same thing. I, I I want to imagine that he did. Because it would have been hilarious. Stolen from you? Three thousand. Three thousand dollars. <laughs> when Nahid Filipos' phone stops working, she Googles a solution and calls the number that appears on her screen. I mean, why wouldn't you just take your phone into either your telecom company or like a, an independent third party uh, phone repair shop? Like, that just doesn't make sense to me. And, like, notice how, like, all the people that are actually falling for these scams are are older people. 
like they've got to be at least like i want to say 40 to 50 at, at the bare minimum on to the phone and he said there are <clears throat> many problems on the phone there are hackers from russia from india from brazil he said all that about your phone yeah he said i like how russia is always one issue. of them we need to work on this phone it has to be minimum I, I i like how like it's always russia because apparently the ussr hasn't left and people are still afraid of a bunch of nonsense like i mean yeah russia is still kind of sucks but like they have to have someone to blame i mean now that's just more or less china but russia is a perfect secondary scapegoat though because there's still so much like inherent fear in like communism in the west even even though that you know apparently communism was defeated <laughs> it's the same thing like with fucking nato still existing it's, it's it was anti ussr and it still exists three thousand dollars to be able to do the transaction <coughs> nahid pays up her money gone i said where's my money where's my money are you the scammers are you thieves he then hung up the phone then i tried again like 10 times 12 times nobody want to answer even <coughs> i mean why would they want to answer you though you already you already gave them money and unless you intend on giving them more money which i highly doubt that you are of course they're not going to pick up they'd most likely just end up blocking your number Police close in on multiple scams. The scammers are adapting, adding a new scheme involving Canadian social insurance numbers. We just suspended your social insurance number and legal enforcement action will be taken against you as we found some suspicious activity. <coughs> and law enforcement is getting help from a big name in the tech. If they have your bank details, they have everything. Absolutely. They absolutely do. Because you can't do anything without money, which is just silly. World, that's bringing us back to Microsoft headquarters near Seattle, and inside it's. Bro, what the hell does Microsoft have to do with this? Do you think Microsoft is gonna stop uh, the scammers? Like, <laughs> that's so silly. Digital crimes unit. We were here a year ago checking out. Wait, they have a digital crimes unit since when? Wait, wait, wait. I have to I have to look at I have to look at I have to look at this now. I I have to know. Um When was it? Um, was assembled in two thousand eight. That's really long. That's crazy. I, I didn't even know that they had something like that. Out how artificial intelligence is helping trace the scammers. Is Phil Spencer actually taking a stand against the scammers? Bill Gates? Uh, probably not. Because I mean, fucking Bill Gates scams people all the time, so I'm not. I, I probably not. Like, the only if he did, it's only to like actually gain more money from fucking Microsoft people. <laughs> Microsoft users. This is a very profitable crime with a very low risk of prosecution. <coughs> we need to invert that equation. Well, yeah, it's because that they're very hard to find, though. So it's not really surprising that it's incredibly profitable for scammers to do this. I mean, of course they they're gonna do this. Lawyer Juan Hardoy oversees the global unit here, feeding tips <coughs> and evidence to India. Over the last uh, 10 months, <coughs> India law enforcement has dismantled 30 call centers and has brought to justice 
72 directors of call centers there. But Microsoft tells us while there have been arrests in India, there hasn't been one conviction of a scam boss since 2014. You got this I mean, it's because they're hard to pin down and they tend to have a lot of money, so... I mean, of course it... Of course there... has been, like, no... Not that many convictions. It's like the same thing with, like, fucking mob bosses. That are right. Um, Help me, show me that. That's really interesting. But Hardaway says they're not giving up continuing their war with the scammers he says microsoft gets a complaint of someone they also could use proxy locations that get corrupted as soon as they have information that they need oh absolutely they do they absolutely do like they'd be stupid not to when impersonating their agents every seven minutes bad guys are now selling calls for call centers to exploit. It's almost like a scam franchise. <coughs> exactly. And it has evolved into that because there's so much money to be made. And as I said, the profits are so big relative to the investment. Our own investigation has led us to believe that there are people in Canada helping with this scam, helping move money and do other things. Is that something that you understand as well? Yeah, that's correct. One trail leads to this house in suburban Vancouver. CBC, the first to discover court documents, which accuse the man who lives here of retrieving the money for a fraud connected to these scams. He even allegedly moves approximately a million dollars through his accounts. Prosecutors say that is laundering the proceeds of unlawful activity. And I mean, but like politicians do the same thing though. Like some of them do. They fucking launder money all the time. Unfortunately, yes, I had to... It auto-updated. I, I really wish I could revert back to Windows 10. <laughs> Windows, 11, Windows 11 just sucks ass. ...are trying to seize the house. His father owns it and denies any wrongdoing, <clears throat> while his son has now reportedly fled to China. We need to target the wallets of the bad guys, <laughs> so that if the money stops flowing... Well, yeah, if you want to stop someone, you attack their wallets. That's why fucking billionaires don't like it when, you know, you don't fucking buy their products or shit, and, you know, want and their employees want fucking better wages. Might still be able to revert back. I don't know. I think it might be a little bit too late. They're not going to be able to keep their operation running and they will go out of business. Microsoft is targeting those money mules and talking to Canadian police about how to do it. But like when it comes to politicians or even like wealthy people in general, they don't tend to use money mules. They tend to use like shell accounts or shell companies outside in like say outside of the country and say <coughs> say like the bahamas or like uh the british virgin isles or some other fucking place like that but yeah that that's legal which that shouldn't be all those people should be fucking thrown in jail because they're doing the exact same shit do it we're working with law enforcement and with also other banks, <laughs> financial services industries, to identify those bad bank accounts or merchant accounts so that they can be suspended and money be returned to victims. And they're not the only ones. Canadian police are hot on the case too. The Mounties are about to take down what they call a super money mule, a top level scam associate who lives right here in Canada. Who they are and how the Mounties found them Coming up. Uh, it's most likely either he got like dedoxed or <clears throat> or he just did something incredibly stupid because good criminal good criminal good criminals tend to not get caught. Only the, only the bad ones do, so he must have made an error somewhere. This is your marketplace. It's a fe well, good criminals either have like a lot of either influence or or they just they're just really smart.
and don't get caught. Because if a, if a good criminal has, like, a bunch of fucking money, it doesn't matter. They can just, like, buy their way out of it. Federal raid. RCMP officers about to move in. Heading down a small hill, picking up speed. They're on the tail of a man they say is a big... He returned to the scene of the crime. Hell yeah, brother. My guy is... My guy is a mad lad. He runs into places shouting at people well, and then leaving. And then he's like, my guy has, my guy just has massive balls. I wish I had the balls he did. Big player in scam calls that plague Canadians. <laughs> they took away my trust, my confidence, everything. Nahid Filipos is a victim of one of those scams. She's waited a long time to see action. Who should be trying to stop these guys? Why don't the, the, the authorities in Canada and India cooperate together? Victims like Nahid. Because they won't, because India's brown. <clears throat> That's one of the main reasons, even though, like, ironically, like, we have a lot of, like, uh, black and brown people living here. That's that, that's just the truth, which is really stupid. And all of us <coughs> who get these calls incessantly are about to see the RCMP act. Seconds after the target arrives at work, officers move in. We're not allowed to get any closer to this factory in Georgetown, northwest of Toronto. I have a feeling that my guy only picked up, like, if if this guy is allegedly a money mule, the only reason why he probably did is because he's not getting paid enough at his fucking job. <clears throat> why don't people work together? <laughs> Racism's why. I mean, that's part of it. Because racism inherently comes from a place of fear. And it's so stupid. We don't judge people in the fucking color of their eyes. Because that reminds me of a... <clears throat> of a time when, like... This teacher, I think it was somewhere in the States, was trying to teach her students about... Um, about racism. And what she ended up doing was uh, having, like, diff like, I think it was, like, if you had brown eyes, you were, like, the superior class for, like, the day or whatever. And you can essentially do whatever the fuck you wanted to. And then if you were anything, like, any other eye color, you were, you weren't treated as, as nicely as pe the people with brown eyes. And from what I understand, it was a pretty solid way to to teach uh, how racism actually affects uh, everyday people because it was like I think it was like um, people who didn't have brown eyes were denied like access to like certain toys and like and stuff like that As the man in the reflective jacket is taken into custody, everything in his pockets placed in bags by police. Dude, my my man's just trying to make a living. Like, if he is a money mule, he only picked it up so he can make a little bit more money at his fucking shit job. That he has, like, no other choice of fucking working. Because education's a fucking bitch. Like, it's so damn expensive. Seems he had no idea that he was being surveilled. That people, police officers, were following him, and they got him just as he showed up for work. We've agreed not to identify <coughs> the police, since many of them are. I mean, yeah, and you also want to protect the fucking cops' fifis. Like fuck their feelings. Undercover. The man is being charged with fraud, money laundering, and property obtained by crime. We watch as he's taken away. A morning he'll probably never forget. I mean, they should also fucking charge, like, all these fucking 
CEOs and politicians that fucking money launder through shell companies. And then just fucking have their money, like, as donations or some other shit. Like, they should, those people should be fucking thrown in jail, too. As the man arrives at the RCMP headquarters in Milton, Ontario, to be fingerprinted and processed, <coughs> officers are on the phone to his wife, telling her she's wanted too. Her husband all. What the fuck do the police want with his wife? Like, she probably has absolutely nothing to do with it. Like, that is so psychotic. Already in custody, she's told to turn herself in. <laughs> like, that's gonna deter her from actually fucking turning herself in. She's probably just gonna run away because now she thinks that, you know, she's gonna be wanted for some shit that she's probably not even involved in. And then, you know, she'll end up fleeing to, like, either Russia or, like, or China or somewhere else. Because she's probably going to think that she's not safe here anymore. I mean, she isn't with fucking police after her, so. And we're there when she arrives. Oh, wait, she actually did? Okay. You're under arrest for the dog. They were essentially money mules or money mule managers that were receiving bags of cash. RCMP inspector Jim Ogden <laughs> tells us his team's investigation shows this couple was working directly with Indian scammers. And then essentially dispersing it and making it... What proof do you have that they were, though? And, like, even if they were, like, who cares? They wouldn't have to turn to it to, if they actually got paid fucking better. She might have thought that she wasn't safe in the matter so of where she lives. I mean, that could be a reason why she did turn herself in. But like if 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 these people were actually fucking paid better, they wouldn't have to turn to Ill illegal ways just to fucking survive. It's so stupid. Accessible uh, to those that are running the illegal call centers in India. What helped get you to this point today? The <clears throat> CBC Marketplace um, episode you did yeah. in so India much dick certainly sucking. raised a flag for uh, the public safety minister uh, and a senior uh, representatives in the RCMP. At a later news conference, Gurinder Preet Dhaliwal, 37 years of age, from Brampton, Ontario. And in Why is it? <clears throat> Why is it always, like, so amusing watching, like, cops trying to pronounce, like, foreign people's names? Peter Preet Dhaliwal, 36 years of age, also from Brampton, are charged with the following criminal offenses. One count of fraud over $5,000, one count of laundering the proceeds of crime, and one count of property obtained by crime. The Mounties were Wait, that's it? Like, if it's just one, that doesn't seem as severe as, like, some of the other people that are doing it, right? That's fucking crazy. I wonder how long they were fucking put, put away for. Reveal thousands of dollars in cash, more than a hundred thousand in jewelry, even a money counting machine allegedly used by the couple. The couple have yet to appear in court to submit a plea in response to the charges. It's about time. It's about time, guys. We show footage of the... I mean, you're only saying that because these people have fallen, most likely fallen down on hard times and it was like the only way that they could actually sus sustain themselves. Like, you're fairly well off. Like, I don't understand why like you're making such a... Like, these, these people probably had absolutely nothing to do with her situation in general. And she's, like, so happy that they're getting locked up. The arrest to Nahid. 
When you see a guy like that in handcuffs. I I'm happy, definitely very happy about that. <coughs> and I appreciate what the police has done to, to do this. This is a big victory, even if I'm not getting my when someone like that is in handcuffs it it saddens me and it makes me mad because like the only reason why they're most likely turning to that is because they can't afford uh, to subs uh, any like other fucking material conditions so they have and like their jobs pay probably like ass because i mean the one guy worked at a factory right and like factory jobs don't tend to pay that well so he probably had and he probably had like some like fucking ransom or something that he had to pay for or like was falling down on like fucking debts or something like that so he didn't he probably didn't have any other options like so stupid my money i'm happy that an action is being taken <laughs> for other people to be safe this is very important <clears throat> Kudos to well maybe you maybe you fucking boomer should actually learn how to identify scams If we don't give people enough money <clears throat> to live, they will resort to crime. I mean, yeah, because, like, if people aren't able to address their material conditions, they're inherently going to turn to stuff, whether it be legal or illegal, to, to get by. Which is why, like, crime is inherently uh, connected to, to poverty. That's why so many people have to, res or so many poor people have to resort to fucking crime. The woman whom you interviewed <clears throat> and was willing to come forward and tell everything, tell all. Uh, victims need to see that, that they're not alone. Watching the RCMP takedown, Mark Simchison, the former head of a major fraud unit. In charge with fraud, money laundering. Good for them. Good for them. It's about bloody time. This is something that you've waited a long time to see. Are you surprised that it's happened? I wanted to have faith, and uh, I'm, I'm glad they proved <coughs> me right. That's uh, kudos to them, because that must have been really difficult. Uh, they're, ce they're celebrating locking up two poor people. Must have been really difficult. And kudos it's crazy to, to me. Marketplace and you guys, because you were the ones that used to... Bro, what is with all the fucking dick sucking going on? It's crazy. Like, there is so much, like, dick sucking going on in this episode. It's crazy to me. I gated all of this, in my view. What do you think the likelihood is that these scam calls disappear? Not very. Not very. They're going to continue. The frequency may drop, may change. Um, Why is that? Because there's still victims here that are... I, I do really like this guy's voice. It sounds... His voice sounds awesome. I wish I had his voice. Vulnerable. Fraud is, you know, it's theft with a smile. The arrests aren't over. The RCMP say... They... I mean, uh, theft with a smile is essentially what fucking co corporations do too. So, like... They should just throw them in jail too. The fucking CEOs and executives why not they're targeting more people in canada and abroad this is going to be a deterrent for sure uh we're going to get our co-conspirators that are here in this province thinking twice about oh i thought we were untouchable and then... you're not going to make them think twice they're still going to end up doing it yeah his voice is fairly soothing no, they're they're not gonna think twice about it because, w what else are they gonna do? If if they can't address their conditions, uh, they're going to have to resort to something, and if it's the if it's a really if it's a way that they can you know make some money and not necessarily have to. <coughs> worry about like the fucking cops coming after them of course they're gonna do it i mean you caught two people that that says nothing though so like they're just not gonna be doing anything about it they're not they're not worried they're not it's the counterfeit crackdown 
It says in big red letters, we don't sell any fakes. Oh, wait. <clears throat> is that, that next one is about, like, eBay scams? Like, I mean, of course, like, there are scams on eBay. You just have to pay attention to what you're fucking buying. It's crazy, man. Ugh, and landlords. Let's see what else they have here. Oh, we have to watch that at some point. That one has to be good too. Oh, there it is. I'll have to watch that too. Dirty truth about supermarkets. Hell yeah. I want to I want to watch them tear open like fucking Walmart. Let's just add a bunch of stuff to the queue and then we can have some we can have a lot of fun watching this. I mean, it, that wouldn't matter, though, because they're already locked up. Yeah, I'm probably going to call it shortly anyways. I'm just adding some more stuff in the queue for later or for next time. Might end up doing more Marketplace on Friday because this is so much fun. It's... It's just so much fun to watch. Like you have my you have that massive fucking legend running into a fucking call center just screaming at people. Oh, that was so funny. That guy has so much balls and I wish that I had his balls. Is there any other ones here? Doesn't really look like it. What's the top comment? I mean, not necessarily. They don't necessarily know. And like, uh, telecom companies scam people as well as uh, uh, scam people as uh, as well. They just fucking tell people that they have to up, or they tell their employees that they have to upcharge you. Where the, heck, where the hell did it go? Why did I move that? <laughs> well, what, what will we be watching next? Dirty truth about supermarkets? Hell yeah. That's going to be an awesome one to watch. Alright, that's probably going to be it for today. Today was such an awesome... Uh, awesome. We watched some pretty awesome videos today. So, thanks for everyone coming and stop, stop down and hang out. I think next time it will be so much fun watching some of the new stuff because next two are, are them ripping into like probably like fucking Walmart and then anti-vaxxers this is great i can't wait to see fucking liberals whip into this it's gonna be so great
All right. I might I might do more of this on Friday or either it's either that or Legends Legends Arceus. We'll see. So, but so we'll have some fun next time.